It's a complete team effort. And we shouldn't even be surprised because what, 2018, didn't they get to three knockout um, extra time anyway? They know it, they like it, they can handle it, handle that pressure. But look, Brazil going out, who coming into the tournament, so many people, favourites, they were my favourites. I hold out my hands. I remember saying on the first game, yep, Brazil all the way to the final. But this is a World Cup that just keeps throwing up surprises and keeps giving and giving. I mean, the question is, how can they look so good in one game, Brazil, and how poor and, and look poor at times in this one? But that's down to them. That's down to the Croatians. Yeah, I mean, you are not as good as your opponents are. And, and I think Croatia uh, today, they were resilient, they were always um, fighting back. I think second half was clearly um, going to Brazil, you know, they had four, five, six chances to, to score a goal. We thought it's all over with uh, Neymar's beautiful uh, goal, um, but they were just never giving up. And, and it's just fantastic that that uh, mentality that they have, the resilience that they have. and. And it shows off, it shows off that it's a small nation, but all their players play in the top leagues in Europe. Yeah. They're all top players. We, we said that mental toughness before the game, didn't we? Um, like I said, played with the Croatian players, and it's that, that attitude never to give in. When Neymar scores that goal, you think it's all over. They were like, we'll, we'll fight to the end. And they got the goal, and they were absolutely brilliant. They changed up the way they played, pressed high, then dropped deep, and that togetherness got them through in the end. Lovakovic has had a sensational tournament. He was great again today. He set the tone for the shooter by saving the first one. Oh, he really did. Throughout, when you think about the game as well, the big moments that he came up made some crucial saves. And I think this carries on from the last game against Japan. They know the confidence, the ability that, OK, we're going through on penalties or we're at this stage again, but we believe we, we are going to progress. It's heartbreak, isn't it, though? You see Marquinhos there. I thought it was a shoe in to, to score. With his experience, the player he is, the way he's played in this tournament, I thought he would have the courage to put it in, but it wasn't meant to be. And I feel so sorry for, for that man Neymar. It wasn't his best game today, um, but he got his goal, but it wasn't enough. It's always, like we say it every time, that's always the, always the danger, isn't it? If you save your main man to take the final penalty and you don't get that far, and that's what's happened. Yeah, they're totally different approaches, obviously, for managers, you know, and, and recently, over the last years, you always saw their best penalty taker take the first one, set the tone, you know, make sure, and don't keep him for the, the fifth, uh, basically, because he might not get the chance yeah. to... So when you set up, would your best uh, penalty taker always, always, take, always take the always, number I mean, one? For me, Neymar would have been the number one penalty taker. Just set the tone, make sure you're going to score the first one, calm everybody else down. The momentum shifted with... Uh, Croatia's equaliser, absolutely, two minutes before the end of the extra time. You know, what goes through your mind then if you're a Brazilian player and then you suddenly get scared and you know the whole nation is is uh, expecting from you to go through to the semi-finals. Oh my gosh, and then you start to panic a little bit in the, in your mind and, um, and you're far more nervous then because you don't have any time anymore to kind of balance your th yourself out and, and relax a second. Some real contrasting scenes down there at the moment. Um, the, the kids of the Croatian players have been allowed onto the field, so they're all celebrating with oh, their yeah. dads down there. And yet, at the other end, the Brazilian fans have stayed. The, a lot of the Brazilian fans have stayed. Obviously, there are a lot leaving, as you saw there, but the, the ones behind the goal have stayed. And it's like they're in shock, Micah. Disbelief. And the, and the, players, are the players are standing in front of them. In, in disbelief as well. But they can't believe it because they were so close, but yet so far. And we all thought probably Brazil would see out the game. It wasn't meant to be. And oh. it's like they can't believe because the, the fans here have been brilliant. But in, fair, in fairness to the Croatia team. I've just, like, sorry, I just saw one of the Croat. Oh, fair, do you know what? One of the Croatian, uh, you're watching some celebrations here, but right down on the pitch now, I don't, I'm gonna say this whilst you look at this. One of the Croatian kids ran away from that celebration to try and talk to Neymar, and a Brazilian security guy came over and went, no, 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 no. And actually, Neymar then got up, turned around, spoke to the little boy, and then walked, walked over. Let's, uh, let's show you the Croatian equalizing goal once again. Uh, Petkovic's first goal for his country in over two years, Alan. And how important and what a time to score. It comes from uh, Guardiola, um, massive tackle first from Fred. 
but so many players upfield at the moment. That tackle is what I'm talking about. 20 years old, the tournament that he's had, that then gives the belief to Croatia to go, OK, we're going to go down the other end, build on this momentum. Modric right there showing some composure and then going on to score. Yeah, but like you said there, you know, Brazil should be trying to hold on to what they have. Don't get caught upfield. Horses comes on. And it's a, it's a wonderful, like Chap has said before, first goal in two years. A little bit lucky with the defection off Marquinhos, but fully deserved for taking that risk in the end. And yeah, it was always... It's not nice to see the scenes, you know, when you feel like you've let your team down at the end when you're so close from Brazil's point of view. But for Croatia's point of view, it was it was brilliant. There were there were probably six Brazilians upfield when Guardiola won that tackle, which is also that that balance between kill it off and not leave yourself too. Yeah, but too I mean, we had that feeling throughout the entire 120 minutes that uh, Brazil today didn't have the last piece of quality, the last piece of killing instinct to say we're gonna finish things off you know we were all happy obviously after Neymar's game saying you know no okay they got the job done but it, it, but the job was never done you know so they didn't have that quality today and they will probably will think about it so many times now over the next few years saying why didn't we score the second goal we had enough chances half chances or whatever why did we let them come back into this game why weren't we not attentive enough then the last two minutes not to let them run up the field again and create that chance i mean obviously now uh, they are devastated they have devastated they they don't comprehend what just happened um and they go marching on, Micah. Yeah, uh, four million people. And Modric, we have to talk about him. You know, when we, uh, we thought Brazil was going to steal it, it was going to be his last World Cup. I mean, some of the, the passes he played today, the effect that he had on the game in terms of controlling the, the tempo. We talked about before the game, the tactical battle in that midfield. And what I was allowed, it was overrun in the midfield, and Modric just dictated at his play, pace, and Brazil didn't know what to do in the end. Do you know who I want to talk about? The best player on the pitch was a right back. <laughs> 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 the game wow. that he had, Juranovic, absolutely, <laughs> through the, the 90 minutes. <laughs> Up and down, his composure on the ball, just a right back that run the game for 90 the, minutes. They, um, they are going to carry this, as you say, Jürgen, for a long time, aren't they? It will sit with them deep, deep, because they prepared for this since a couple of years. You know, this is not only happening right now for Brazil. They went through a qualifying campaign, which is the most brutal one in South America, with 18 games to play, uh, to qualify and to get through. And, and they, they carry that chip inside of them, you know, for quite a long time now. They were hungry. They were full of energy, they really believed in themselves, but today there was a lack, a lack of quality. Ah, uh, opens up the tournament, although you wouldn't want to face Croatia. Oh gosh, you know you wouldn't, because the experience that they bring, we saw it in 2018 and we're seeing it again, that you, you can't write anyone off in this tournament. We've had so many shocks. Uh, we certainly have. We were thinking it might be a Brazil-Argentina semi-final. It certainly isn't going to be a Brazil-Argentina semi-final. Some of the, at least their physical fitness, maybe not their mental fitness. No, oh, it, it, it comes all together. You know? So, so when uh, Brazil realised after 15, 20 minutes that this high-pressure uh, system by Croatia you know, is, is part now of, of the game, they, they try to push it further up the field, but not necessarily chasing now Croatia all over the place because they know the individual quality can beat you in a heartbeat. Um, but it is this kind of messaging between each other saying, you know, we are in here for a battle, we understand, you know, but, but uh, uh, it's going to be a long game. It's going to be a long game. And, and I, I think uh, when, you, when you pressurize, it doesn't matter if it's a higher block or in a middle block system, um, and you think always about what Brazilians next move, it wears you out, it makes you tired. And this is where uh, Paqueta and also especially Casimiro, they were hoping for that. They're saying, OK, we sit back. You might look a little bit better. You have a little bit more possession. But actually, we, we know exactly what we're doing here. Because as soon as I find Neymar, and Neymar finds one of the top three, then we're going we're gonna to kind of uh, get that chance that we need to break the results. Um, the best player in that first half was a right back. Oh, you ran a bit. Why do you sound so surprised? Do you know what? Can we have a bit of positivity with that, please? 
<laughs> well, I tell you why he's the best right back in this game at the moment because he's literally not even sitting back worrying about the Brazilians and their overload down this side. He's like, well, actually, I'm going to make you worry about me. I'm going to drive forward and get into spaces when I can. Even here, he knows that the space, you change the point of attack and he needs to be there and lead in that attack. And look at his energy just to get forward. And here, sometimes it's just being an option to be a bounce pass. It's not even nothing big, but it's allowing his team to keep possession and get up the field. Once again, being another option, getting forward, making Brazil worry about him. He's been doing it for the whole 45 minutes. Pass and go again and go at speed, driving into space. I just absolutely love it. And this is when we're talking about attacking right backs and being brave on the ball. And to do this at the end of it, it's just been quality the whole half, Micah. And this is what managers really want to see. They want to see one against one battles. Yeah. They want to see, okay, who drives who mad? And in this case, in his case, he's uh, uh, basically telling Vinicius Jr., yeah. I'm I'm in charge here. I'm the boss. Here. That's another cat and so mouse, this, isn't this it? Is, this is a, a whole mental approach. Is that I'm gonna go down the wing? I don't care about you. You might be the best wing in the World Cup, but I'm gonna go and maybe I'm gonna score. And he almost scored. Uh, so these one against one battles, you summarize them all over the field. You're gonna win the game. Do you know what? I deliberately tried to make that question about the right back as monotone a question as possible, <laughs> so that you yeah. couldn't read anything into how I said it. But anyhow, but go back to that cat and mouse then down down the Brazilian left side to then try and put Juranovic on the back foot. Yeah, because when I was looking at it yesterday, I was like, actually, where you might worry for Croatia is both of their fullbacks, and they've really got to double up. And you can see from the offset that the Brazil was like, okay, these are the targets we're going to area. Neymar's going to come into that space. Obviously, Richarlison also, all the options in there, Vinicius Jr., and they've been doing it. Exactly that. And I, I just think that the position of Danilo has been brilliant because he's got in the centre of pitch, which is dragging their midfield out. That's allowing this space for Vinicius. In that first 20 minutes, he was the one who was going to get the ball to. And they need to get him a little bit more because, like we said, Ranovic is, is taking him the other way. But he, he's a star man. He is a danger man. I just think they're lacking that little bit of a, a final pass lack of a little bit of quality, rushing things a little bit, but Vinicius, no doubt, is that danger man. Who, um, who do you think Jürgen at half-time will think they might have to change it more? Because that's what I find fascinating about this discussion. Um, there's certainly, I think, maybe the thought process uh, uh, for Brazil saying maybe we, we move Neymar higher up the field and we go and add another midfielder to be more more solid in midfield, uh, but I hope they don't do it. I think, you know, they, uh, they're always a little bit on the edge, more of the more attacking style at the end of the day than getting more defensive. And I, I think if, if they're patient and they keep the tempo maybe a little bit higher and they get their wingers into the game and Rafinha we haven't seen yet, no. you know, I mean, Sosa wins his battles against Rafinha. If Rafinha can maybe get into this game and Vinicius is a little bit more on the other side, um, I think they can add a lot more quality and create more chances. Sorry, Sorry, I was no, just going to say, on, from a manager's perspective in looking at it, so would you, in terms of Brazil, would you not even be worried because you know that they have that threat in attack and just those moments that you're waiting for? And I think that's an important message to your team, actually. You say, no, no, don't worry. OK, we understand here and there we are a little bit in trouble, but you have enough quality to go forward and decide this game.